out of bed and chicken skin feet hit freezing wooden floor. I'm half awake and sleepy seeds still cling to the corners of stony, dreamy eyes. I'm running slow mo on a go go cold Minnesota November morning, focusing with chilly will on the coffee cooker to pour out from a pouting spout, a mean, slow stream. This of program is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and by the members of Prairie Public. On 20th, the high school boys track team runs on the sidewalk, tanned and muscled like a squad of Adonai. Their determination rolls off stoic brows, 10 miles, that's all. In close pursuit is the girl on the bike. She follows a few yards behind these gazelle. She pedals effortlessly, a smile as broad as the brim on her straw garden hat. The girl grins for sunshine, for summer, for bicycles, for following the high school boys track team. Before my eyes, the bike becomes a white stallion and the girl wears a hunter's tunic with bow and arrow slung over her marble left arm. Hunting these, the easy prey, they will wear down. They run in straight lines in the flats. No water, they'll need to stop and rest in the shade. She will ride up and dismount, they cannot run. She pulls back the gut of the bow, piercing their glistening skin with her eyes. Hi, my name is Terry Mono, and I am originally from California, and I moved to Moorhead, Minnesota, actually about 26 years ago, to take the position as piano professor at um, Minnesota State University, Moorhead. I'm also a performing pianist, and Kevin and I have been colleagues for years, but it was only recently that we finally decided we were going to put together our project, and that is somehow to combine his wonderful, inventive, creative poetry with my music. His suggestion was that I should compose music to it. And I was a little intimidated, actually, because I haven't composed music since I was a student in, in college. I talked with him about what the mood is, what kind of emotion is behind it. And then I write music that will hopefully complement the content and the context and uh, make something even more special than just music and words, but something, something greater than the sum of its parts. Occasionally, uh, one of us comes up with a piece of music that is not composed by me that we find so um, captivating that we try to find a way to make it work with some of Kevin's poetry. Out of bed and chicken skin feet hit freezing wooden floor. I'm half awake and sleepy seeds still cling to the corners of stony, dreamy eyes. I'm running slow mo on a go go cold Minnesota November morning, focusing with chilly will on the coffee cooker to pour out from a pouting spout, a mean, slow stream of steaming java. Shiver and strut, peel off paisley pajamas and jump into the cup, sprawling off the breadboard, diving board, feet together, palms lock in overhead and kerploosh, a 9.5 Olympic swan dive into the mug. I swim and swoosh around the inside hemisphere of the mug, dive under the hot murky brown and feel stinging caffeine peeling eyelids. Awake! I poodle paddle across the ripples, crossing back and forth from one lip of the cup to the other. Australian crawl, climb up curving handle and cannonball throw sienna over scalp, splash and spit like a greasy grinning gray goose. Just plain rolling it till half the job is all over the kitchen floor. Towel off with a big paper coffee filter. Drain the cup in two guiltless gulps. She floats through the universe coffee hut and orders a tall, dark cup of twilight. A mercury comet carries her to the beach by the bay. 
she spreads her shawl on the ground where grass and sand blur. It's early morning, her favorite time, when the fiery yellow sun and shy coy moon exchange glances in the pale iris sky. She sips the spangled twilight slow, pausing when she's connecting with something, as she does in the morning. The ocean air rolling in from a point where the only land is underneath deep water, cools her face dissipates the remaining steam from her open cup, fluttering breath from a blue mother. For her, all of the elements in her life melt like a sandcastle. Magic surrounds her. She warms her hands in the wax cup feels the honeycomb dimples on the amber wrap holder, savoring each swallow down to the bitter brown. In this moment, the sky clock winds down and balance regenerates. After she empties her cup, she gazes into the bottom Tiny stars shimmer among earthy dregs. The honey locust in our backyard is dying. Before we moved in, she watched dogs and children play under her tropical looking leaves. I took her for granted for several seasons until the wind tore off a large limb, exposing her trunk. Each year, it takes a bit longer for the buds to burst into beautiful leaves under the spring sun. Thin layer of bright green moss is new skin on her scarred side. Today, I sit beneath her and take the time to listen. She tells me what's below her bark, where her stories come from, she remembers life as a sapling when our town was a dozen shacks, two saloons, and a preacher's tent. Many of the lindens and elms she knew 
vanished. Victims of the axe, thunderstorm, floods, disease. She is the lone honey locust for miles. She wished for a partner near her, someone to give her a forest. She tells me that when she falls, to use half of her to build and remember, then pulp her other half to help the remaining trees in our yard. Then I must plant a honey locust sapling to shade, keep watch, grow new stories. My name is Kevin Zepper, and I am one half of the group Lines and Notes. I teach at MSUM, Minnesota State University, Moorhead. I'm in the Department of English. I teach all kinds of writing, and uh, typically it's poetry and, and uh, a variety of kinds of writing. I am fascinated by writing. It's not just a straight up poetry reading, and poetry readings are wonderful. Some of the things that we've performed, like uh, church and state is the result of this of this idea that William S. Burroughs came up with years ago, but he had some very, very interesting ideas about the cut up and different ways to explore writing. We did uh, church and state, put that together by writing uh, lines of different uh, songs on cards, and then Terry, in turn, took pieces of religious and political music or, or, or patriotic songs, and we started slicing them up because there's a sense that, particularly now, it seems like the lines are blurring between what is church and what is state, and that was the whole point of the, of, of the cards and whatnot. People do laugh when we perform that piece, but there's also this kind of nervous laughter as well as like, you know, there's some realizations, there's some connections being made. I pledge allegiance of death of the Lord, and I shall dwell indivisible. I will fear no evil in the home of the brave. Hallowed be thy name. for his name's sake. Give us this day our daily bread. He restoreth my soul in the paths of righteousness, where the grapes of wrath are stored. And crown thy good with brotherhood 
He leadeth me all the days of my life. For thine is the kingdom. For thou art with me. Thy will be done. Yea, though I walk under God forever. I pledge allegiance to the flag forward into battle with the cross of Jesus to the flag. The Lord is my shepherd or the land of the free and I shall dwell one nation our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses above the fruited plain in the house and the home of the brave whose broad stripes and bright stars and the power which art in heaven so gallantly streaming Yet wave, thou anointest my head with oil, thy kingdom come, or the land of the free, in green pastures, amen. The taste of mint wintergreen tea and the lemon drop on my tongue dissolving in my mouth. Is this the flavor of summer? Maybe spring? Another season fallen away. The wide boughs on willow trees, heavy with almond leaves, billowed shade in the imaginary landscape of this pale room. A stray tea leaf, sugar and citrus tingling in my mouth, a meeting with sweet tea friends at a round oak table. Steaming water, loose leaves, timeless china cups. taste of mint wintergreen tea dissolving in my mouth another season fallen away the wide boughs on willow trees billowed shade in the imaginary landscape stray tea leaf tingling in my mouth, a meeting at a round oak table, steaming water, timeless china cups. green tea dissolving through another season willow 
trees, shade, imaginary, tea leaf, steaming water, china cups, dissolving, Landscape, tea. I think that audiences seem to enjoy what we do. I, I don't see anybody pelting us with anything. There have been a few cases where um, uh, some some people uh, have come up to us after a performance and have definitely been uh, moved in some way, either by, uh, by something that was uh, sensitive or something that was humorous. And I think that's important to have a reaction and to have them thinking after we get done. I mean, it's, this isn't just about um, hearing some uh, wonderful collaborations, but also to leave thinking, there's something here that I can leave with and maybe I can do something with my art like this, or maybe I can, maybe I'll have to reread this again because now I have this different perspective. One of the wonderful side benefits of collaborating is you, you get out of your comfort zone and your space and you work with somebody in, in a different field. I realize now, after hearing Syrinx yet another time, the flute is always female. She is a sprite of some kind, both girl and woman, calling in golden tones between the ground and clouds for someone to listen. I can't say if she calls for like, lust, or love, avoiding pans, pains. Maybe, maybe she waits for a sylvan kiss to soften her blues to carry her notes higher. Every time we have performed, people are so um, taken with what they hear and what they experience. And I don't think there's ever been a performance where someone hasn't come up and, at the end and told us that, that we actually brought tears to their eyes um, from some, something that happened within the context of a performance. And of course, we like to finish with our um, ransom poem. And everyone's always uh, laughing during that poetry as well. So I think we touch a range of emotions in people and we always hear those kinds of comments afterwards. So it's wonderful. Now listen closely and listen good. I have your poem and if you don't do what you're told, you won't see your poem again, ever. 
I'm not going to hang on this cell long, so don't pull anything tricky. Sounds like you got the little present I sent you. Yeah, I cut a line off your precious poem to prove I mean business. Yeah, yeah, call me what you want, but I got your little verse tucked away, and I'm calling the shots. Here are my demands. I want a complete, unabridged set of the Oxford English Dictionary. The index, too. No condensed version crap, either. The real deal. Meet me behind the noble barn at midnight. Go to the second dumpster where they ditch the tear covers and romance returns. Stuff the OED in a big black lawn bag, two-ply, and put it on top of the dumpster lid. I'll set the poem in its place after I know no one's followed me. But let me be clear on this. If you drag the English department in, Cut your poem a little more, a little more, and a little more. Be a smart poet and don't try anything heroic. I have a degree in American lit, and I'm not afraid to use it. Out of bed and chicken skin feet hit freezing wooden floor. I'm half awake, and sleepy seeds still cling to the corners of stony, dreamy eyes. I'm running so this program is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and by the members of Prairie Public.